All right, we're going to do some more um, kind of test preparation, test practicing type of things as we start getting closer to when we have to take our state test next week in reading. Um, so this packet that you have now is a variety of different things that you might see that are similar to what you'll have to do, except when you take the test, you'll take it on a Chromebook. It won't be a paper pencil test like we're practicing here, okay? So let's look at part one. It says this question has two parts. Answer part A and then answer part B. So what you're going to do is you're going to read that paragraph and then you're going to look down at part A after you have finished it. And it says, which sentence best concludes the paragraph? Do you know what concludes means? Kind of, it's how it would end. So you're going to choose the sentence after you read it that would be the best like ending sentence for that paragraph. The sentence that kind of wraps it all up in one sentence. Okay. Then part B goes with part A. Why is your choice in part A the best choice? Is it because it's a fact? It restates the opinion. Do you know what restates means? It means it says it again. Okay. It states another opinion. So it's stating a different opinion. Or it gives a fact that supports the opinion. All right. Now... Question two has nothing to do with question one. All right. It's completely different. So let's go ahead and work our way through this. Look back up at part one. We're going to read that paragraph. How about you read it with me? Turn around. I like many kinds of pets. But I think dogs are the best. Oh, well, hold on that right there. Is that giving us a fact or an opinion? opinion? Okay, let's keep reading. Dogs can learn to obey when their owners say sit or come. Dogs wag their tails or bark when they are excited. They are easy to feed because they seem to like almost everything. Dogs need to go for walks, and walks are good exercise for dog owners. All right, so now we're to part A. Which sentence best concludes the paragraph? A, cats are good pets too. B, all in all, dogs are the best pets. C. Some dogs shed lots of fur in the spring. D. In the end, every pet is someone's favorite. So think about what the whole thing is talking about. And then decide what do you think would be the best ending sentence for that paragraph. your hands on your hips once you have that ending sentence chosen. Okay, now let's look at part B. Why is your choice in part A the best choice? Is it because A, it is a fact. B, it restates the opinion. Remember the opinion we had said at the beginning there? C, 
It states another or a different opinion. D, it gives a fact that supports the opinion. Okay, are we ready for two? Mm -hmm. Remember, two has nothing to do with part one. Jen is taking notes for a paragraph about how to make orange juice. Select the three, how many? Three. Notes that best support the topic. Again, select three. So what is her paragraph about? How to make orange juice. So you're going to choose three of these. Let's read through them. A, tastes good. B, has vitamin C. C, need a pitcher. D, use cold water. E, Stir with a spoon. F, made from citrus fruit. Choose the three that best support the topic, how to make orange juice. Okay, number three. A student is writing a research report about trees. Read the sentences from the student's report and the directions that follow. Trees are important and we should plant more of them. Trees give people and animals food. Apples, peaches, nuts, and other foods grow on trees. Trees can give shade in hot weather. They help an area stay cool, so e less electricity is used. Not only are trees useful, but they are beautiful. If you are able to help plant a tree, you should do it. All right, now, the student took additional notes. Additional means what? More. More. So the student took more notes about trees. Choose two, how many? Two. Choose two notes that support the student's opinion. Do you know what their opinion was from what they wrote in that short little paragraph? Mm -hmm. Underline their opinion up in the paragraph. Their opinion is what they think about it, right? So what is their opinion about trees? What did you underline? Lucas? Trees are important and we should plant more of them. That whole first sentence is their opinion. Okay, then they gave us facts that support their opinion. So now we're going to look through these six sentences, and you are going to choose how many? Two. Two. Two more of these notes that support their opinion. A. Trees take many years to grow tall. B. Trees provide a space for animals to live. C. The trunk of a tree is protected by its bark. D, trees put oxygen in the air for us to breathe. E, many kinds of trees grow in parks around our country. F, you should give a tree plenty of water after planting it. What would be two more sentences that would support 
their opinion. Circle those two. Okay, then flip your packet over. All right, now there's a story. It's called Luke's Paper Crane. And it continues on to the back side of that page. But first, what I want us to do is flip the page so that you can see question four. We're going to, excuse me, we're going to look at the questions that go with that story. So question four has two parts, a part A and a part B. Part A says, what is the meaning of the word crane that is as it is used in the story. So crane has multiple meanings. You're going to have to identify the correct meaning of how they're using crane in that story for part A. And then part B says which sentence from the su from the story supports the answer in part A. So based on which one you circle, you have to find the sentence that supports the meaning of that, why you chose that. Okay. In paragraph eight, sorry, I'm on number five. In paragraph eight, if you look back, they numbered the paragraph eight for you. Okay. So in paragraph eight, how does the author use a literary device? So you're going to have to decide, are they using a simile? Simile is comparing two things using like or as. Did they use personification? Do you remember what personification is? What's personification? That was alliteration. Personification is when you give living qualities to a non-living thing. You give it like human qualities. Like you could make a dog talk or a tree talk. That would be personification. Okay? Or maybe your pencil starts talking or your pencil starts walking. That's personification. Okay? Um... An idiom. Have we talked about idioms? Yeah. It's been a while. Idioms are like things that, two words, no, they're not two words, but like they're a thing, like it's a kind of a sentence that doesn't really make sense, but it means something. Kind of. Haley? It's like yeah, figurative language definitely does make things more interesting. I was going to copy this and then I forgot. Nah, that's all right. We'll make do. Okay. She'll go with her. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so idioms. Um, like if I said, that was a piece of cake. Am I really saying it's a piece of cake? Yeah. What does that mean, that was a piece of cake? That was easy. Okay. Other idioms that you might be familiar with are um, if someone says they're under the weather. Have you ever heard that before? If someone is under the weather, it means they are not feeling very well. All right. Um,
What if someone says, don't let the cat out of the bag? Natalia? Yeah, don't tell the secret. My hands are tied. Have you heard that? Yeah, like you're busy. Yeah, you're busy. You can't do what someone is wanting you to do. Okay. Um, oh, this is one. Put your foot in your mouth. No, don't really do it. That would be gross. But do you know what that means? If someone says, oh, I put my foot in my mouth. Reese, what do you think? Yeah, you said something that you shouldn't have said. You made a mistake in what you said. Have you ever heard someone say, ah, they're just pulling your leg? Do you know what it means? Like they're being crazy? Yeah, they're kind of messing with you. They're joking around with you. Um, you might not be as familiar with this one. They tied the knot. Did they really tie a knot? What does that mean, they tied the knot? No, they got married. If you tie the knot, you get married. That's an old, old one. Okay, so those are idioms. And then onomatopoeia. Okay, it's a sound that's associated with something, right? Like if you're walking on leaves, it might go crunch, crunch. All right. If you open a pop. That's onomatopoeia. The sound of a mosquito. Zzz, onomatopoeia. Okay. All right. Turn to question six. Question six says choose two. I want you to circle two. Choose two sentences from the story that best show the paper crane is important to Luke. Choose how many? Two. Two. All right, question seven. Which detail from the story best shows that Mr. Cruz is an understanding person? Underline that because you're looking for the detail that shows us he's un an understanding person. Okay, for eight, they ask, which comparison between cultures is made in the story? Languages, do you know what languages, what that means? Like, language would be what you speak. English, Spanish, Chinese, Japanese, Russian. You know, all those are different languages. Okay, so are they showing a comparison between cultures using languages in this story? Using the school? Using friends? Or artwork? We're going to have to be able to identify that comparison. All right, the author's purpose is number nine. What's the author's purpose for writing Luke's paper crane? Is it to persuade, to explain, like giving them directions for something, okay? To entertain, entertain or to inform. And then there's one more question if you flip over the packet. One more question for this story. You're given four choices here. You'll have to carefully read through and choose the one that is the best summary of the whole story. There's only one correct one. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to have you do is go back to the story, the beginning of the story, Luke's paper crane. 
We're going to finish Luke's paper crane. That's all we're going to finish up for today. Okay? Once you have read through Luke's paper crane, the story, and then you do questions 4 through 10, you're going to put this in a folder. Okay? We're not going to go all the way through this packet today. We'll continue to work on it tomorrow. So we're just doing the story and the questions for the story, Luke's Paper Crane. Do you have questions? If you have questions as you're reading, you can ask me, okay? Please do. I don't want you to be confused. Can you read the book? Yes, just read your own book while others are finishing their work. Okay, but when you're finished, where does this go? In the no, in your folder so that you have it for tomorrow. Lucas? Sure. Any other questions? No? Yes? Sure. Okay. All right. You may go ahead and start. If you want to sit around the room, that's fine. If you prefer to stay at your desk, that's fine as well. <laughs> 